Lesson 12, land use conflict in the Amazon rainforest. Now we're gonna do the entire lesson of lesson 12 today, so it might be, might be a little bit of a longer video, but I'll make the worksheet a bit smaller in that case. First up, we have our geo terms. We've got biodiversity, the, var the variety of plants and animals living in one area. The term can also mean the great variety of all living things on earth. Carbon, carbon oxygen cycle, the process by which carbon and oxygen cycle among plants, people, and animals, and the environment. Deforestation, removing or clearing away the trees from a forest. Deforestation is often done to clear land for farming or ranching. Sustainable development, using resources in ways that meet the needs of people today without hurting the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. This means finding ways to use resources without using them up. And tropical rainforest, a broadleaf evergreen forest found in wet and hot regions near the equator. Ooh, this is tying in perfectly with our ecology units. Crazy, you'll know what's going on if you watch the science videos. Picture yourself in a hot, steamy forest. It has just stopped raining and everything around you is green and moist. Green vines wrap around the slender trunks of trees that reach more than 100 feet into the air. High overhead, a tangle of vines, branches, and leaves nearly block out the sun. Except for the buzzing of insects, the forest is practically silent. Then, you hear a strange barking sound coming from the treetops. You look up and get your first glimpse of a red howler monkey. Welcome to the Amazon Rainforest, an enormous tropical rainforest in South America. The rainforest seems timeless, yet it is changing rapidly. For thousands of years, small groups of indigenous peoples have made their homes here, surviving by hunting and gathering. In more recent times, other groups have come to the rainforest, including rubber tappers, farmers, cattle ranchers, and loggers. In addition, the rainforest is of great interest to environmental groups, which are organizations that work to protect the natural world. Each group has its own ideas about the Amazon rainforest. The rubber tappers, farmers, cattle ranchers, and loggers want to use the rainforest to make a living. In contrast, indigenous peoples want to maintain their traditional way of life and environmental groups want to preserve the rainforest in its natural state. These differences have led to land use conflict or arguments about the best way to use the land. In this lesson, you will learn what the various groups want and examine some possible solutions to land use conflict within the Amazon rainforest. The essential question for this lesson is how should the resources of rainforests be used and preserved? This illustration shows six groups that are interested in the Amazon rainforest. Some want to use the resources of the rainforest to make a living. Others want to preserve the rainforest in its natural state. Keep the possible conflicts among these groups in mind as we try to answer the essential question. We have native Amazonians, rubber tappers, loggers, settlers, cattle ranchers, and environmentalists. So throughout this, we're going to learn about what each group want from the rainforest. The geographic setting. Tropical rainforests are a type of broadleaf evergreen forest found near the equator, where the climate is warm and wet all year. The Amazon rainforest is the largest tropical rainforest in the world, covering more than 2 million square miles. That is more than half the size of the United States. Most of this vast rainforest lies in Brazil, but it also covers parts of Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, and Venezuela. So the green part in this map here, that is our rainforest we're talking about. A rainforest is a complex ecosystem that has several layers. The bottom or ground layer is called the forest floor. The thick layer consisting of overlapping tree branches at the very top of the forest is known as the canopy. Between the forest floor and the canopy are shrubs and smaller trees that form a layer known as the lower story. An amazing variety of plants and animals live in the various layers of the rainforest. Rainforests cover only approximately 6% of Earth's surface, 
but they are home to about 50% of the world's living species. Scientists use the term biodiversity to describe the variety of plant and animal species that live in a particular area. The great biodiversity of rainforests attracts scientists of different specialities who come to study the flora and fauna there. Other groups of people have different reasons for coming to the rainforest. Some people come to clear land for farming and ranching, a process that results in deforestation or the removal of trees from large areas. Other people are more interested in sustainable development, which means finding ways to use the resources of the rainforest without destroying it. Many people around the world worry about the fate of the Amazon rainforest. A major reason for their concern is that tropical rainforests affect life far beyond their borders. The trees and other plants that grow in these dense forests have been called lungs of earth. The nickname lungs of earth comes from the key role that rainforests play in earth's carbon oxygen cycle. The carbon oxygen cycle consists of a series of events that turns a gas called carbon dioxide or CO2, it's carbon oxygen, two oxygens pushed together, into oxygen, and then it converts the oxygen back into CO2. In this way, carbon and oxygen are cycled among the living things that need it to survive. Here's how the carbon oxygen cycle works. When people and other animals breathe, their bodies take in oxygen and breathe out CO2. Cars and factories also produce CO2 as a waste product when burning fuel. Trees and other plants absorb CO2 from the air using the carbon for their growth and then they release the oxygen back into the air as a waste product. When people and other animals breathe in this oxygen, the cycle begins again. Because rainforests are rich in plant life, they are a major part of the carbon oxygen cycle throughout Earth. Scientists believe that the Amazon rainforest alone creates about one quarter of Earth's oxygen. A rainforest tree may have produced the oxygen you are breathing right now. So pretty much, we breathe in oxygen, yes, I'm breathing now, and then I exhale, and carbon and oxygen have left my body and they're smushed together now. And eventually a tree is going to get that and the tree is going to breathe in the carbon dioxide, CO2, but they're only going to take the carbon and they don't want the oxygen, so they're gonna push that back out into the world, which we then breathe and the cycle continues. Now we're getting into what those six groups that we discussed earlier want from the rainforest. This part is about what the native Amazonians want. Once, there were as many as 10 million native people living in the Amazon rainforest, but today the number of native Amazonians is much smaller. Those who remain want one thing above all, to continue their traditional way of life. This picture here, we see that native peoples have lived in this rainforest for about 12,000 years. So even before year zero, this man here is using a traditional bow and arrow to hunt, um, but in recent years, most native Amazonians have lost their land. Native peoples have lived in the rainforest for about 12,000 years. Many live as they always have, by hunting, fishing, and growing crops on small plots of land that they have cleared in the forest. When a field is no longer fertile, they clear a new field somewhere else. Over time, new forest covers the old field, this is a sustainable way of life that is using the resources of the Amazon rainforest without causing long-term damage. In the 1960s, the government of Brazil decided it would open the Amazon basin to development. The government began building a highway, which farmers, ranchers, I lost my spot, and loggers followed into the Amazon region. The arrival of so many newcomers has hurt native Amazonians. Many of the native people have been driven from their homelands in order to create space for farms and ranches. Some of them have died from diseases brought by newcomers, and others have been killed or injured in land use conflicts. Today, native Amazonians are fighting to save parts of the rainforest from development, arguing that they have had right to preserve themselves and their way of life. As native leader, uh, Davy Kopenawer Yanomami has said, 
I want to live where I really belong, on my own land. In their struggle to survive, native Amazonians have to had to learn new skills. One of these new skills is speaking Portuguese, which is the official language of Brazil. Another skill is understanding how to work with Brazil's government and legal system. Native groups have called on the Brazilian government to make them the legal owners of their homelands. Only through legal ownership will they be able to keep others from destroying their rainforest home. So native Amazonians, they want to keep it how it used to be. They live in the rainforest. Nobody else touches the rainforest. What the rubber tappers want. Rubber tappers have lived in the Amazon basin for many generations. These workers tap or collect the sap from rubber trees that grow in the rainforest. The sap is then dried to make rubber products such as erasers or tires for cars and bikes. Rubber tappers first came to the Amazon region during the 1870s when they were hired to work on rubber tree plantations in the rainforest. When the price of rubber dropped, most of the plantations were abandoned. However, some of the rubber tappers decided to stay in the region and continue making their living in the rainforest. Rubber tappers remove sap from a rubber tree by making diagonal cuts in the bark and then collecting the sap in cups. Removing the sap in this way does not harm the tree, which makes rubber tapping a sustainable activity. Rubber tapping is one way to use the resources of the rainforest without harming the environment. In the 1960s, the government of Brazil decided that there were better ways to use the rainforest and began to encourage people to clear the forest for farms and ranches. In the deforestation that followed, many rubber trees disappeared, leading to land use conflict between the rubber tappers and the newcomers. Because rubber tappers want to continue making a living from the rainforest, they need to stop the widespread clearing of trees. Therefore, they asked the government of Brazil to create protected reserves within the rainforest. These areas are set aside for sustainable activities such as rubber tapping. Rubber tappers believe that their right to the rainforest comes from having worked there for so long. They also argue that their way of life does not harm the rainforest, and for this reason, they believe that the government should protect their activities. Um, down here at the bottom, we have a picture of a guy who is tapping a rubber tree right now. Um, it says rubber tappers collect sap from a rubber tree without hurting them. So they cut in the diagonal lines that we talked about, and they just put a cup underneath it and collect the sap. One tapper, Chico Mendez, became a leader in the fight to preserve the rainforest. Eventually, because of his activities, he was murdered. His death brought world attention to the rubber tapper's cause. The rubber tapper pictured here is working in a reserve that was named for Mendez. What the loggers want. Logging companies began moving into the Amazon basin during the 1960s. Loggers harvest trees from forests for use in wood products, which range from paper to fine furniture. Numerous varieties of tree species grow throughout the Amazon rainforest. The most valuable species are the hardwood trees, such as mahogany and rosewood. Furniture manufacturers all over the world appreciate the beautiful wood from these trees. Unfortunately, these valuable trees are scattered throughout the rainforest making it difficult to find and cut only the hardwoods. Instead, loggers clear cut whole patches of rainforest, which means they cut down all of the trees in an area. After all, all the trees have been removed, the loggers continue on to another patch. The logging companies argue that clear cutting is the only way they can make money, but clear cutting is also a major cause of deforestation. The larger the area that is stripped of its trees, the longer it takes for the rainforest to grow back. Logging also leads to other types of development. For example, logging companies build roads deep into the rainforest so that they can transport logs by truck. Meanwhile, settlers who are looking for land follow these logging roads into the forest, and once they have arrived, they claim land for farming and ranching. Many groups oppose the clear-cutting of the rainforest. 
However, loggers argue that they are helping Brazil's economy grow by creating jobs for people in the forestry industry. In addition, logging provides wood for Brazil's furniture factories and paper mills. Lumber companies also argue that they have made forestry a valuable economic activity in Brazil. In 2015, Brazil exported more than $10 billion worth of wood. The money earned from these sales is helping Brazil to pay off its debts to other countries and is improving the living conditions of many of its citizens. So down here we have a picture. It says in the 1960s, loggers began building dirt roads into the rainforest. Other groups began to develop land near these roads. In time, some logging roads became paved highways. So in our first picture, we have our untouched rainforest. So kind of as they were starting in the 1960s to clear. And we can see our land in the back is all brown and they've been chopping down trees. And then we move forward. Well, now most of the trees are gone. Our highways are in here now. And there's less land for trees and more for farming what the settlers want. Brazil has the eighth largest economy in the world, but around 4% of Brazilians live on less than $2 per day. In rural areas, an even greater proportion of the population is poor, with poverty rates reaching 75% in some regions. During the 1960s, the government of Brazil began to encourage poor people to move into the Amazon rainforest. These new settlers arrived in large numbers looking for rainforest land to farm. Um, here we have a picture of some guys who are clearing the forest. It says settlers who come to the rainforest clear the trees off their land to create farm fields. Farming in this environment is not easy. The constant rain washes away the soil's nutrients and tropical insects also kill many crops. Brazil is a vast country but it has limited areas of farmland, which are not shared equally. A few wealthy families have long owned most of the best farmland, where, whereas millions of poor Brazilians own no land at all. For many families in Brazil, the prospect of owning a farm in the Amazon basin has once seemed like a distant dream. The Brazilian government did what it could to try and make this dream a reality. The government brought poor people to the rainforest, supplying them with money and free land to enable them to plant their first crops. Over time, however, the dream has become a nightmare for many farm families. As native Amazonians learned long ago, farming in a rainforest is extremely difficult. The thin soil is surprisingly poor in nutrients, which are the substances that make a field fertile. Constant rainfall washes away whatever nutrients the soil once contained, and the soil loses its fertility. The amount of food it can produce shrinks. The native Amazonians solved this problem by clearing new fields every few years. After some time, their abandoned fields would regain some fertility. However, Brazilian settlers cannot relocate as easily as the native Amazonians. As more settlers have cleared land for farming, opposition to them has grown, with native Amazonians, rubber tappers, and ranchers all wanting the settlers to leave the rainforest. In response, the settlers argue that there is no land for them in other parts of Brazil and that they must look to the rainforest for land to feed their families. What the cattle ranchers want. A rainforest may not seem like it could be cattle country, but since the 1960s, parts of the Amazon basin have become just that. Although the Amazon cattle ranchers are a small group, they own large areas of the rainforest land. Rainforest cattle graze primarily on grass. They consume the grass in an area all the way down to the dirt, and then they are moved to a new area with fresh grass to eat. Moving cattle from place to place gives grazed areas an opportunity to grow new grass but this practice also uses up a lot of land. Today, cattle can be found grazing on vast areas of grassland throughout the Amazon basin. Loggers cleared some of this land and farmers and ranchers cleared the rest. After large tracts of rainforest are cleared, trees seldom grow back and the cleared areas become grassland. This permanent deforestation upsets many people 
but it greatly benefits ranchers. Many people argue that cattle do not belong in a rainforest. Cattle ranchers strongly disagree, countering that they are making good use of the rainforest land by raising food for the world and earning income for Brazil. Many countries import beef from Brazil, including the United States, which is one of the biggest buyers of Brazilian beef. However, some environmental groups are dissatisfied with this trade. However, oh, by one estimate, 70% of deforestation in the Amazon basin has been related to cattle ranching and soy production for cattle feed. Like logging, cattle ranching has become an important economic activity in Brazil. In 2016, the value of beef that was exported to other countries exceeded $5.5 billion. The government of Brazil can use the income from beef sales to help pay its debts and to provide services for its citizens. Not, uh, uh, environmental groups. Not all Brazilians want to see the Amazon basin developed. For example, environmental groups have worked for many years to attempt to slow the clearing of the rainforest. Their ideas have led to conflict with many other groups. Scientists and environmentalists began coming to the rainforest in the 1970s. Some came to study rainforest plants, hoping to find plants that can cure diseases, and others came to study rainforest animals. Still others came to work with native peoples. All these groups want to protect the rainforest and of its biodiversity. Scientists estimate that a 2.5 acre patch of rainforest may contain up to 750 species of trees and 1,500 species of flowering plants. The same patch may also be home to as many as 125 species of mammals and 400 species of birds. Moreover, these numbers include only the plants and animals that scientists already know about. Countless unknown species also make their home in the rainforest. Environmental groups argue that all rainforest species have a right to exist, which means their rainforest home must be preserved. Environmentalists therefore want to slow down development of the rainforest. This would give scientists time to study the effects of new activities so that better decisions can be made for the future. In 2000, environmental groups won a major victory against ranchers and successfully blocked a law that would have allowed ranchers to clear rainforest land without restrictions. Another victory came in 2004 when Brazil's government created two large rainforest reserves where only sustainable activities like rubber tapping are allowed. In 2008, Brazil's leaders set up a $21 billion fund for conservation and sustainable development in the Amazon. Norway alone donated more than a billion dollars. As of 2017, the fund has supported nearly 90 environmental projects all across Brazil. Ideas for reducing land use conflict. Each of the groups discussed in this lesson had its own ideas for how best to use or preserve the resources of the Amazon rainforest. Recall native Amazonians want to keep their way of life the same. Rubber tappers want to keep rubber tapping using sustainable activities in the rainforest. The loggers want to be able to keep chopping down trees to help build the economy of Brazil. Settlers want to be able to keep settling in the rainforest so that they can live as cities are becoming overcrowded. Cattle ranchers want to be able to keep grazing their cattle, um, which is tearing up grass and cutting down trees for the grass, so that they can also help with the economy of Brazil. And the environmental groups want things to stay the same, keep the trees and animals protected and have no changes moving forward, that is, in the rainforest. Often, these dis differences lead to conflict. A few groups, however, are looking for ways to balance preservation and development. In this way, they hope to meet the needs of people while also reducing harm to the rainforest. Here are some of their ideas. Promote ecotourism, okay? 
most countries encourage tourism, which is the business of organizing travel for pleasure. Tourism supports a country's economy because tourists spend money on hotels, meals, services, and souvenirs. Some tour companies are promoting a new type of tourism that is known as ecotourism, which attracts people who are interested in visiting unique ecosystems such as a rainforest. Boat tours of the Amazon rainforest are popular with ecotourists who come from all over the world. Ecotourism offers many benefits. It creates jobs for people in the tourist industry, and it helps the economy by bringing in money. Most importantly, it gives people a reason to preserve the places that ecotourists come to experience. However, the great danger of ecotourism is overuse. If too many tourists visit a fragile area, they may contribute to the destruction of what they have come to see. Another way to balance development and preservation is to encourage sustainable development. In Brazil, sustainable development means finding ways to use the rainforest without destroying it. One way is by growing crops that do not require large areas of land to be cleared, such as shade-grown coffee. Shade-grown coffee is a method of growing coffee that makes good use of rainforest trees. The coffee bushes are planted under a canopy of trees, which prevents them from getting too much sun. Leaves from the coffee bushes enrich the soil. Additionally, the coffee bushes provide a habitat for birds, which in turn eat insects that attack the coffee plants. This type of farming involves few or no chemicals, which is good for both the coffee planters and coffee drinkers. Another less harmful way of using the rainforest is strip logging. Rather than clear cutting large areas, strip loggers remove long, narrow strips of forest. The forest grows back in these strips far more quickly than in large, clear cut areas. Consumers can help protect the rainforest by buying products that support sustainable development, such as ice cream and cereals made with Brazil nuts. The companies that make these products buy the nuts from native Amazonians, thereby helping native peoples make a living without damaging the rainforest. Another step that consumers can take is to buy products made from wood that is harvested in a sustainable manner. Not all wood is harvested in the same way. Some wood is logged in ways that can destroy a forest, whereas other wood is harvested with care and respect for the forest. Until recently, there was no way for people to know whether they were buying good wood. Then in the 1990s, logging companies and environmental groups started to create certification programs to help wood buyers find what they were looking for. Under these programs, products from well-managed forests are certified or labeled. The label tells a buyer that the product comes from good wood. Consumers today can buy many certified good wood products from forests in Brazil, including lumber, charcoal, pencils, furniture, and musical instruments. Let's sum it up. In this lesson, we read about land use conflict in the Amazon rainforest. We learned that the rainforest is an important part of carbon oxygen cycle. The rainforest is also rich in biodiversity. However, since the 1960s, loggers, settlers, and ranchers have cleared large parts of the rainforest. Native Amazonians, rubber tappers, and environmental groups continue to oppose this deforestation. Still, the rainforest continues to shrink year by year. Here we have a picture here. At the top is 2000, at the bottom is 2010. It's satellite images is what we're seeing here. So we're shown the same part of the Amazon rainforest in the year 2000 and 10 years later in 2010. The tan colored patches are areas of deforestation. So we can see in the year 2000, there's not that many. In the year 2010, there's a lot. Rainforests are shrinking worldwide. A few thousand years ago, they covered 12% of Earth's surface Today, only about 2% of Earth is covered with rainforest. That is it for lesson 12. Told you it was going to be a bit longer of a video, but a little bit shorter of a worksheet today. So think about what each of the six groups want from 
the Amazon rainforest. Which one do you think right now, at least, you most agree with and why? I will see you next week when we talk about the Andes Mountains. Woo! -woo.